Previously on, The Awakening with Chantel Bettis Brown, the podcast. But this is the perfect time, I believe, for absentee parents. Just because you're in the house doesn't mean that you're a present parent. You can be still be absentee parent. Come on, 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 Conversation for another. We're not going to talk about so, it. <laughs> and, and, and bring me back to it. I'm no, here no, for no. It. Yeah, we go. I'm here yeah. for it. So yeah. you can uh, still uh, be an absentee parent just because you're in the house doesn't mean you're present. This is the perfect time to be a present parent. Um, and it can be just starting off helping with. That's why a lot. Mm, that's why a lot of y'all were frustrated helping y'all children because you're an absentee parent. You don't know your child and you don't know their their um their characteristics. Jesus. So you don't know who you're dealing with. I'm you know your child. Thank you for coming. I turn it back <laughs> over to you, Chantel. <laughs> uh, when I tell you. First of all, hi, Reggie Whitley here with Open Vault Podcast, and I'm here. Conversation for another. <laughs> here is another. I have Walisha Bettis Barrington and my girl from The Awakening, Chantel Bettis Brown. So glad to have you both here. Hello. Glad to be here. Hi. So <clears throat> here we go. Conversation for another. Conversation for another. Here is another. And you said, Walisha, you got to bring me back. So, of course, here we are to start over. We just I guess it's a part two of that <laughs> door. We were getting ready to open. Yes. So can you tell us, we know Chantel, we know about you, even if they don't watch The Awakening and they only watch um, Open Vault, you've been on Open Vault enough to where they know you. Um, so we know you are mother, stepmother, um, <laughs> all that good old stuff. Oh, <laughs> Alicia. And, and we call Alicia Therese because I ain't going to be able yeah. to do that the whole time. <laughs> so Therese, tell us about you. you. I know you have a, a child and all that stuff. Um, so now I actually have two. <laughs> yeah, that bed is just not a coincidence. They are sisters. Yes, I'm starting to look more and more like her as I look at this camera. I'm like, dang, we look alike. <laughs> <laughs> so I brought you two on, of course, to, like I said, continue that conversation because one of the things that I have noticed, one of the things that um, is pretty prevalent is not just absentee parents, because so many people talk about absentee parents as far as being out of the house. So many people talk about being raised by, we hear a lot of single mothers, although there are a lot of single fathers out there. Um, and we hear a lot of that based on one parent that's in the household. But I wanted to shine a light on the fact that you can have two parents in the household and still be, of course, like I mentioned, an absentee parent. Because I think that a lot of people don't understand. They think that, oh, I'm doing a good job. I'm doing better than mine did. I'm doing better than most do because I'm in that house. But there are damages. My truck that, uh, <laughs> that girl said I track. Uh, but there's a lot of damages that children uh, don't, don't get mentally because they okay. have um, two parents, but only one is present. Whichever one of y'all want to go first to talk about it. Well, for me, yeah, you know. Well, for me, I feel that um, basically a lot of people don't have the right understanding to when you know it's. I I see a lot of people, especially men, and really women have have got it bad too. And they be like, "Well, I got my kids. I'm raising my children. It's taking my kids. I they got." and I make sure they got this and, and I make sure they get that. But being a parent is more than just buy, buying providing. and providing a roof over the head. Providing. And you have to be really on point with it when you look at it in that way because um, it takes more than it. You know, you can be in the house and basically right there and in the house with the child and don't have no type of relationship with the child emotionally. And a lot of people fail to realize that you can, one of the things that I love the most as far as um, what my experience was, at first I used to think that it was bad that I was raised in a single parent household, but then when I looked at it, it was good because my father wasn't in a place where he can damage me. 
as a do- as his daughter. Because sometimes you fail to realize if you don't show that love, if you don't show that affection like you need to, then you messing up the female or the male child even worse. You're really not giving them nothing but what clothes, food, and toys or whatever the case may be. But if you're not there emotionally, physically, you know, to ground them where they need to be grounded and connect to them, you know, to a level. And one thing that I, I, with my mom, uh, with our mom growing up, she used to make us give a hug and kiss every night. And I used to be like, why we got to give her a hug and kiss every night? Because basically she was showing us that affection. It's okay to be affectionate and it's okay to tell your pain, you know, for, you know, to show that affection. And I thank God for that. And it's something that I don't do that. I wish I, I need to start because the other day I told Soraya, I love you. And she was like, what did I do wrong? I'm like, why you had to do something wrong? And just cause I said, I love you. Like, for real? So right, I was you like, said, this sounds no, like a setup. Set up, okay? And I'm like, Lord Jesus, am I dead bad? And so when we, when I thought about the podcast, I was like, Lord, don't let me be that parent that's in the house that's providing and that's all I'm doing. I'm not to their level. I'm not driving her, pushing her, I'm not helping her to, her and to grow into a womanhood and you know, it, it takes more than just being in the house raising a child. I mean, it takes more than you just being there. Sometimes you can be in a whole different room and for hours at a time and don't know what your kid doing. As long as they're not messing with you, you good. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's my perspective on it. Trish? Um, <clears throat> yeah, you can, you can definitely be an absentee parent and still be in the household. Um, and and I look at it as, um, like, parents just not knowing their, knowing their children or not being able. Some, some parents just really, like, they, they're just not able to know their children. Um, and that may be because of, like, a struggle, you know, like, all they can do is provide, you know, all... All, it's all they can do. Make sure that everybody got food and things. And when you live in a life like that, um, you 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 seem to have like a lot of frustration that you may or may not recognize. And so when you're at home, you just kind of just like don't want to be bothered, or you know, you just want to do things that you want to do, or you need a break, or whatever. Um, and so a lot of those things can, um, lead to like, not, not neglect, but just like, just like an unknown, like a veil, basically, you know, like. I think it's like an emotional neglect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, emotional neglect because like the children aren't getting that attention and then you're wondering why like they might be acting out in school or doing all these different things but they they're just not um old enough to understand how to like the children aren't old enough to understand how to regulate those feelings and so um it kind of just like plays out in other areas of their lives and and then you're wondering like oh well why you can't act right at school? What you know? What you doing? Or why you acting out at daycare? Or why you can't just sit down? Children are pro- aren't programmed to sit down. They're not. <laughs> They're not. And so, um, and and um, a lot of a lot of the time, children just really just doing basic things, and the parent just can't really like take the time to just realize that you know, hold hold up, like he's a He's a, he or she is a human, you know, they're trying and to get something to drink. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the, the whole absentee thing, it, I, I get it, but then I don't because like I, I had, well, I was a single parent, um, for what, eight, nine years before Chris came along and, um, I always took time to to learn my 
oldest. Like I knew that for I still know I'm like the back of my hand. And I and I always yeah, it's like, and it's it is like it's different with the oldest. Well, I I take the time to learn Cairo too, but you know, just speaking from when I was just a single parent, like I knew him. Like if something happened, and mm-hmm. I I don't like to be that parent where it's like I know my child, like my child won't do that. But I legit know my right. like I know his temperament like I know what he will and will not do like as as who teacher be like he is stubborn and I'm like yes he is I bet you can't get him to work out a math problem and be like nope like you know but I also know that he's not gonna hit anybody why why do I know that because I put him in karate and for what because he won't even pers- he won't participate he didn't want to hurt nobody he didn't want to hit on anybody so i know like if he goes to school and the team like oh he got in the fight i know he didn't provoke it because he you know he's not a fighter he he doesn't like to be violent so um i i don't understand why ch- parents wouldn't want to take their time to um get to know their children and um, just be that absent-minded, but I understand why some, a lot, most of them can't, um, because they're just so focused on other areas in life. Um, and also, could it be that because I, I thought of this while both of you were talking, could it be that we come from a generation who comes from a generation who comes from a generation, and so the further back you go, the less time, especially so in to, our, um, 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 build uh, it. right? You have to restructure how you parent, especially when you have certain people who come from certain generations or backgrounds that, let's say, have to work the fields. They didn't have time to learn their children. As a matter of fact, a lot of them in a particular generation had children only to help or out around the house. That's why they had so many. A lot of people are like, why did they have so many kids? It's literally, they needed help in the fields. Mm-hmm. Uh, help came from when they had children, but they didn't have them to necessarily parent. And they raised them based on whatever so it is it down, they pass it down they pass it down so the question that a lot of people may have homegirl has left the building <laughs> so the question that a lot of people have is um how can i be something that i didn't receive or how can i do what i didn't see how can i there's such an excuse now let me just preface this by saying i should have said this in the very beginning i ain't got now okay I'm talking about now. I'm talking about can't nobody come up and say, hey, you're, this is your child, and I'm going to just sit up and believe it. I mean, I... so I'm not a parent, so that's why I have two parents on. What do you say to those people who say, because to me, it's sort of a legitimate uh, excuse, but then it's not. It's not. Yeah, that's where I'm at. My, what I would say is. Give me the, give, give me the question again. What do you say to I people? In, yeah, homegirl <laughs> so left us, and and we just kept going. So if you're watching, you probably can even tell she left. But <laughs> um, the question was, what do you say to parents who say, "Well, I didn't receive this, or I didn't see this growing up. My parents didn't treat me with affection. So how do I, in turn, treat my kids with affection when I don't know what that is?" So. I think you look at where you just are. By, and, how you mm-hmm. and then just by taking small steps, you know, just being present in the moment. If you take your child to the park, be present while your child is at the park. Don't just be sitting there on your phone, like chase them around or something. Um, watch a movie with them, draw a picture with them. You know, it doesn't really take much. You don't have to do it all the time, but children. Remember what you do, not what you buy. Like people feel like that. Oh, if I can, if I buy my children, um, the the newest shoes, the latest shoes, and the name brand clothes. Oh, you know, it's lit fam. No, they don't remember nothing. That they don't even wear it long. 
whole different conversation. <laughs> but and it could yeah. even not be connected to because even though it could be something they don't good, it could be connected to something negative. Because like don't for me, my dad that. used to buy me Jordans all like every new pair of Jordans. Jordans hurt my feet. But so, did you, you know, understand whereas, that? Well, no. The point I'm making is you can look at that and say, "Well, I bought you Jordans." And, and that's a good thing. Or somebody else can say, well, your dad bought to look at you. You always had a new pair of Jordans. But I couldn't wear them because they hurt my feet so bad. So whereas somebody would say, oh, that's such a good oh, thing. Yeah. So you have to look at even though it could be a good thing. And, and that's with a whole lot of stuff. You can say, well, I took my kids to Six Flags every year. But what if they had exactly... But what did... Or but, what if they yeah. had a bad experience at Six Flags? So whereas it's so a it's like trip, you're trying to like over provide, you yeah. know, over provide and do the most. Not not saying do the most in a bad way, but right. you know, you're just trying to like you're doing good, like oh, um, I'm trying to provide them with the best. But did you ask your child if that's what they wanted? Like, and uh, that's another missing component in parenting is like. It, like people feel like children don't have an idea of what they want or you know like they can't speak for themselves I, if they can't talk of course they can't speak for themselves but simply ask your child what they want to do what do they want what what type of shoes they want like you buying Jordans, they might want the light up shoes from walmart you taking them to this way they probably just want to go to the little splash pack uh park down the street you know sometimes kids are simple they are real simple. I think it's and more so, so it, it's I think it's more so now because of where we're living in the where we're at in this society. You have to keep up, uh, more, uh, uh, keep up with the Joneses, keep up with the not Jones. so much as the Joneses, but you got to keep up with the lifestyle that's out there now. Because just to go back as far as when we was talking about being in the house, you know, back in the days, you used to kids used to be outside all day. Mm -hmm. all day and so you it's know. easier to kind of to relationship with a child because majority of kids don't even like to go outside they like to be in house be in the house on the phone so to me it's even worse now i wouldn't say that they i wouldn't say that then. they don't like being outside because that's not what they used to if you think about it kids these days right. grow, they are born with an iphone or an ipad in their hand you know they don't get the yeah. outside exposure, you know. So I want yeah. like you can take a kid outside and right now. About too. ten minutes in, they gonna be like having the time of their lives. But you know, so yeah, I remember, yeah, and that go that goes. Go ahead. Go ahead. That goes back to neglect too, as well, because like technology is taking over that quality time that parents should be putting in with their children. But to keep them quiet and occupied, yeah. it's like, here, here go tablet, here goes iPads, get down, sit down somewhere, you know. And I, Because I it goes back now, to uh, <laughs> children sitting still and that's not how they are programmed. And I think now it just goes back to uh, where we're at, like in this point in time. We didn't have a lot of mothers or fathers that was trying to be entrepreneurs or do a lot of things as far as break family curses, as far as businesses and different things like that. And so not only is the parent working a eight to five, the parent is also working on building a brand for their child or a legacy and trying to come home and parent. And sometimes we, I, can only speak for myself when it comes to certain situations like that. I just be tired. And I have to apologize, especially to Soraya, because I feel like she's the oldest, so she look after the, you know, she helped with the, her little brother and sister. And so, and sometimes I have to push back and say, okay, let me get this. And I, it's like, you have to, it's sad to say, but you have to kind of plan to spend time or put that no, it's to not sad because you it's have, not sad. but it's 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 so much going on because for me the planning part gets me because what if I plan okay I'm gonna hang out with her on Thursday and then Thursday come some come up I got to go to work or uh, the key is happening. you don't tell her so it's always a if 
The key is you don't well, tell. I, mean, her I if don't you know. tell her, but for me as a mom, and I don't tell her. I don't tell her, but for me as a mom, it's like, dang, what I'm gonna do? And you know, and I think that's what as well is we so focused on breaking curses that we're not understanding we're starting another curse. Mm -hmm. So I remember hearing a while back uh, Maya Angelou Low Lou Low once said that her mom was a horrible I don't even know if she used the word horrible but <laughs> it's me here was a horrible mom to um babies and children but she was an amazing mom to adults. So Maya said that she she didn't have a good mom growing up, but when she grew older, her mom became a good mom. And so that opened my eyes to the fact that, you know, I ain't got no kids, so I'm prepared. The fact that you can have people who are, they're not bad parents, but they are not good parents for a certain age. And Chantel, you hit on one of the reasons why, I believe, because I think that one of the reasons why is because we have such a culture of grinding, of doing, we're so busy, things move a lot faster now than they used to. It used to be, you just went to work and you came home and you cooked and you, or whatever. It even used to be the, the wives stood uh, stayed at home all day. They didn't have jobs. And so they were able to spend more time. Can you speak to you being, a, you have been a single parent now you are a um a wife with the father in the house and um you have children and stepchildren can you speak on that more um kind of how to balance do you balance well <laughs> tell me do you i mean i know the answer what but you mean by people. balance ba because you know to me there's a balance but to parents no, a lot of parents i, like, I mean I, no I, I really I, it, and it's not. I mean, it's a balance in a sense, but it's really not because it's like for me, every child, every last one of my kids are different from the oldest to the youngest. And like I say, for me to come home and work, my husband, he do the cooking and he hey, do the cleaning the majority man. of the time. Hey. But I'm grateful for this and, and I'm grateful for that area. But I have to also let you know sometimes or remind him, say, hey, babe, there's more than that that you have to do sometimes. There comes a point you got schoolwork. You got spelling words you need to learn. You got, I got stuff I need to do. Podcasts to be exact. You know, finish a book to be exact. Uh, help Joshua learn his colors and, and his shapes and stuff to be exact. You know, it's different things that we as parents have to do and the support system I feel like some parents have like a cutoff. A cutoff is for us what they gonna do and they just be tired and it's Because I was just about to ask you about I'll that. I be tired. Do you feel that you should be able to do it all? Because I be you know, exhausted. somebody might be listening and be like, Hey, you, he he cooking, he cleaning. Well dang, you want him to do everything. But isn't that expected of the mother? To, cook, exactly. to clean and to do. so exactly. exactly. Can, do you have to do it all? And how? But do we you ain't in them days and age. Speak on it, help the people. Because some people grace think you say that. And mercy, she grace and mercy, <laughs> grace and mercy, <laughs> grace and mercy. It's all I got to constantly say. Because it's <laughs> you know you you will have yourself. You know I have my I have my moments and. I have the times where I be like, oh, my God, they are like, come on, give me a break. We y'all just mm -hmm. give me a mama moment. So, like, I tell my husband all the time, you know, when you walk in the house, you're able to go in. Do whatever you want to do. You don't work. I want to do. You able to go in, go in the room. They'll bust up in there and they'll say some a few times or daddy. But they you alone for at least 30 minutes to an hour. Me, they coming for me at the dot. Chantel mama, Chantel mama, Chantel mama. And you trying to do everything. And I'm like, okay, I got to write a book. I got to work on, I, I got to work on this podcast. I got to re record this show. I need to, I'm doing Mother's Day baskets. I need to do these shadow boxes. I need to do this. I need to do this. And they do that, and it's like once you in the house, 
everything freeze, everything stop. You're a mother first. Before all, mm-hmm. you're a mother. They ain't going to let you do too much. So it's like, I can see why a lot of parents, and I used to get mad at my mama and be like, girl, you should have been this and been this. Even though she went to school and got certain degrees, I understood as far as now why she didn't do certain things because some people just don't have that drive, you know, don't have that, don't want to release that, that pressure on nobody else where you raise my child while I get my future together or something like that. And so, and I think that's basically where it's at when you choose your kids first, but it's, it's just always something. So I have this question. Both of you can take it, whoever wants to go first. Um, but I want both of you to answer. Do you feel that you and your husband, both of you are married, are present parents? And what makes you a present parent? Because a lot of people don't know. You know, I, I want to use this opportunity to give examples. Because, of course, that looks different in a lot of different ways. Um, some people can feel like they are a present parent, but they're not. And some people can feel like they're not, but really and truly they are. So are you? and your husbands, and what makes both of you individually and collectively present parents to your children? Or even if you want to give examples of where you can improve, you can do that. Um, I think I am. I'm very attentive to my two boys, and it's not, I want to say, I'm not, I'm, I know I'm not bragging, it's just me as a person. That's who I am as a person. I'm a uh, I observe everything, no matter if it's my kids, somebody else's kids, the dog across the street. I'm just going to be in observation mode at all times. So it just plays a part in my parenting um, to just pay attention um, so that I'm on my, like, I'm not caught off guard a lot of times. And so, like, I like to know what to expect with them and not not my expectations of them but what to expect from them and of them um and um as far as my husband um before you go to your husband let me ask you based on your observing you say you're very observant so do you because i want to help the people who are listening do you acknowledge everything that you observe or do you no. know, okay, this I need to, okay, so uh, how do you No, I don't, I don't acknowledge everything. Um, it's just learning behaviors and character, you know, like I know their character, I know their temper, temperament, um, like the biological clock. I just um, observe all of that about them. Um, and um, I try to key into like the things that they like or catch their attention and um feed off of that versus like just doing what I think is fun or uh, good for them. So like for example, um Jeremiah, he likes he's he's a logical thinker like his mother. <laughs> and um so like we one thing that I've invested in um, is conversational conversation cards, so that we can sit and we can just ask each other questions. Just there's just a box of random questions, and we just you know talk about it. So I don't really acknowledge everything like to them, but in my mind I do, um, just so I can like have a key note. And it's kind of like a parent cheat sheet. You know, you have it and they be like, oh, you know, they don't say anything, but it's like, oh, my parents, they, they really listen, they really pay attention because you can't in on what they like. So my husband, he does the, um, so I'm the mother, <laughs> right? Yes. And so he does the, um, the cooking and the cleaning and, um, partial, partly um providing because we are a dual income household for right now and so um he does like most of the cooking 90 percent of cooking 90 percent of the cleaning um and then when i'm not 
um, when I'm, so our schedule alternates. So when um, I'm at work, he's home with the boys and um, vice versa. Then I, then I come home and he goes to work. So he gets his time with the boys. Um, and sometimes he takes Hyro outside and, um, or take Jeremiah's skateboard and, um, or they they probably walk to the store or something like that. One thing that we um, have started trying to do is like family activity. So like um, a couple weeks ago, a month ago, something like that, we just took like a day trip to the beach um, and took me down and then came back the next day. Um, just trying to get, because because of the schedule and how it's so complicated, um, just try to get in family time however we can. So um, I want to say, I, I, we're both present parents because we both attend to, to the boys, but is my schedule works better for being present than his does just because of school and other things. Um, we kind of piggyback same thing. Um, me and my husband, basically we swap shifts in a sense too. Uh, both of us, um, work and it's like I go in he uh, goes in in the evening. We kind of swap out. If I he has to work mornings, I work night. And so uh, during the days that he has to work nights, uh, now he's home alone because my kids are back in school. Even Joshua, he's back in school. So he doesn't have a lot of free time. He has more time with Joshua than he do with the girls because the girls get out of school um, right at four o'clock by the time they uh, three thirty, three forty five, 45, he getting ready to leave to go to work. So it's like a, Hey, how you doing? And you know, how was school? And he mm-hmm. got, and so when he get home, they sleep. So I think for the most part, I'm more, um, I try to, I'm, I'm that parent that's trying to, you know, like I, like I said in the beginning, uh, trying to build certain things. And I feel like, Right now, I know I I can't say I really know everything about mine. I'm very I'm like her as well. I pay attention to a lot. I don't address certain issues, um, but I pay attention. I pay attention to when um, like I say, I try to put myself on a time frame or a schedule as to what I want to do with them of what I want to do, you know, but I'm single, kind of single them out because my middle child, her, her mother passed. And so it's like, she's my daughter now. And it's, it's a full time for me. So it's like me helping her with her mom, the loss of her mom, and also building that relationship too, where when she get older, she'll feel comfortable. Not, and as a child, she'll feel comfortable. So um, I think I'm more of a hands-on um, I do tend to, you know, stray away when we are at home, like now, just to record and do different things and do stuff that I need to do. But majority, these girls talk your head off. I think girls are more different than boys. And my son, he's very clingy. Joshua's very clingy. But he's a leader. He's very demanding. He feel like he's the man of the house when his dad gone. And so, but he's more of a, He's a good parent as far as providing and all that stuff like that. He's a good per- parent when it comes to that. But when it comes to education, he's like, babe, you got this. I can't do nothing for you. When it comes to, I can't do what these kids doing in school now, ain't nothing. Um, I try I think- to get him to open up more, you know, as far as to show them the male figure because I didn't have that a male figure in the house. You know, I had a stepfather for a while that I look up to now that I really call my dad instead of my stepdad. But when it comes to teaching the daughter certain things and aspect when it comes to that, I'm trying to push him to, you know, is you know, you got to have that conversation. You got to, because we got a lot of children. Even though some that's not in the house, mm-hmm. I try to have him to, you know, open up, you got to open up that, that time frame and that that you have with them before they get teenagers and grown because emotionally, he's working on his emotions with 
the kids. But I feel like I'm the more nurturing. But I'm also, I don't play with them. Me and my sister are two different parents. I don't play. I don't try to whoop them and all that stuff like that. But I am more harder when it comes to conversations. And and I get that. I, I can actually say I get that from my mom. I I would threaten up a river. I, I don't know if I should be offended or not. I'm going to take you to the police that you do that again. And, you know, my, I'm just saying, like, the threats are real <laughs> around here. But um, it's certain things that I do different, and I'm working on it. Because I also, I see parents with little girls now, and just, you know, really kids, period. They have an open, you know, and I like how Treese is with uh, my nephew. You know, they talk and they come. He's open to come to her. And I don't want my kids to be so fearful of my, you know, when I get the fussing and stuff, that they don't talk to me. So that's one thing I'm working on as a parent. But as far as him and, you know, both we, it's it's a lesson. It's a lesson in everything when it comes to parenting. I think and I what, don't want to um, be that one that they look back and they say, well, mama, you was in the house and you was here, but you want here? I think what um, father figures, especially the ones that's like you know in the house, two two parent households, um, it becomes routine. It so it, and it's not intentional because uh, obviously um, mothers are the nurturing ones, and um, so the children seems to cling to the mother more, right? And so the male times take on another role and then they feel like, oh, I'm not needed in the area, so let me put my energy somewhere else. Uh, I find it that yeah, with, yeah. with men and fathers that's in the household, that you simply just telling them, you know, this is what I need works because they just don't know like you would think it because we take the most yeah. of the load mm -hmm. as mothers as parents that um we just naturally do things you know the baby need a, a, a bath we we gonna go give them a bath you know we we don't really just yeah. think hey just put this on you know because that's that's what a mother is used to doing anyway so and and so things like that just become a routine and it is it's like you know, like you don't think about it. But um simply just saying, Hey, I need you to do this for you know, I need you to give the baby a bath, I need you to, you know, read a story or, you know, X Y Z, whatever it is, just simply saying it because they probably just don't know because it's just something that's used to it's like, okay, this is established like you do X, Y, Z. Yeah, I think that like, men are just like, not, no offense, but they just like, kind of just like think, you know, tunnel vision kind of with certain things. You know, it's like, you know, like the, what the, the, the little color wheel, men see red, orange, yellow, blue, green, all, you know, the standards, and we see teal and turquoise and, you know, aqua and, and, and light, mm -hmm. uh, pale yellow and stuff like, like that. So it's just like they just see, you know, the the reality. They don't see the, you know, the behind the scenes things. Um, and so you just kind of have to like, hey, yeah, this 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 is what's going on. I need you to do this, and then they'll do it. But it's just you have to speak up and say, I need it. It's it's different factors that play into why the the roles don't get shared or passed. Like, and it is. Not always intentional. You got a few men out there who be like, eh, "That's a woman's job." But a lot of them, you know, they just have to be reminded, or you ha you have to speak up and say, "Hey, I need help." Um. So we're gonna go ahead, and and this is gonna be the last point. And Chantel, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it to you with this one, and then Trish, you can pick up on it. I should have had a man on here. Because I have to ask y'all now, because um, and, and some will say, "Well, how you gonna ask a woman nice to me?" So I have to restructure what I want to know. So Chantel, you start off with 
and then we're still in our clothes. <laughs> but Shantel, you start off with how is it if men aren't raised? So let's say, now you're going to use no example. So if men aren't raised to be, you know, parents or nurturers or things like that, how is it that you can take a man? How? how I'm trying to see how, because I don't want to say like, because it's not a woman's job to shift or change a man, their husband or their baby's father. But how is it that, I don't want to say that we can expect, but how can we pull that out of, how can we show men, hey, it's not it's not enough to just go to work and bring, even if you're bringing in, boo, cool, I'm talking about you be a gate net out here in these streets. That's still not enough. You still have to be there emotionally. But if they weren't taught that, how do you help? What is it something that you, as a wife, as a mother, would say? Well, I don't know if anybody's seen the podcast um, last season uh, of Awakening. I actually had one of my favorite uncles, um, my uncle Larry. Um, and one of the things he, and we had this conversation, uh, and it opened up so many areas because it's something that I, I truly believe in as well. No one can be the perfect or good parent, whether you're the male or the female. But for the male, so many men was raised up by their mom. They didn't have that structure and that foundation and that example of what a man should do in the household. One of the things that he told me was it has to be a want. It has to be a want. Yeah, you're going to mess up. You're going to do this and you're going to do that but it has to be something that you want to break and you want to change as a child as a male and living in a household and you don't have something that's just like me I knew from my mom experience my mom I didn't want to have birth a lot of kids because I wanted to structure you know my time with my kids, I wanted to get be able to provide. I didn't want to struggle to make sure they had. So I didn't have a lot of kids. I mean, I got a lot of, I got a lot of kids as far as being a stepmom and stuff like that, which I consider as a mom. But it was something that I wanted, and that I knew that I was gonna do different. I feel like. Sometimes people use that as an excuse where I didn't have a role model or I didn't have a male figure in the house. So if the male will heal, the child male figure will heal, then the adult in him will appear where he can say, okay, when you was a child, what did you want to do with your father? If your father was present in your life, how did you want to live and what would you want to do? I want to play sports with my daddy. Or I want to play football with my daddy. I want me and my daddy to do this. I want me and my daddy to do that. Okay, do do that for your child. You know, it's not a rule book. It's basically live as you go. You know how you want to be treated. You know what you expect, your criteria, what you wanted. So you use that as your platform, as your base, as your uh, your your print, uh, what is it? Uh, the print, um, uh, what's the word blueprint. I'm trying to say? Um, uh, your blueprint. Thank you. You use that as your blueprint, and you also don't. I think one thing about men that, um, uh, in this day and times, they don't want to go out and get help. Some men don't believe in, um, going to see a therapist or going to get help outside of men. They know it all, and when you have a, and when you unteachable. And you have that know-it-all attitude. It kind of hinders you to be what you can be, really be better than your father and really be better than the person that's in you that you fight. And so for me, it's like any parent that didn't have that parent in the household, whether it's mother or father, you can break that chain. You can break that chain of being raised or the things that you do if you want to. You just got to want to change. You got to be able to give your child what you didn't have. So, as a, like I said, as a child, how did you want to feel mentally, physically, emotionally? Did you want your daddy to come in the room and say, I love you? I mean, all that is, to me, uh, the blueprint of being a better parent. And so, for the, I didn't have that. I didn't have a father figure in my house, but I knew what I wasn't going to accept. I mean, I didn't have my father in the house, but like I said, I knew what I wasn't going to accept. 
I knew what that for, and I knew what I wasn't going to do. And so that in itself, as a female, I used it. You know, I didn't hold it against my father. I didn't hold it against my mother. I just went for it. I just knew what I wasn't going to accept. And so you got to know, you know, you got to heal first. I think a lot of it is healing. And once you heal from it, you'll be able to grow. I think that that's really good. <laughs> um, and cool. I, I think I, I like what Sean said, and and I think this new generation that's coming will be better off because, like, therapy is like everybody this is like the pill <laughs> to take these days. Therapy, but um, right. I was just thinking about when she was, that's you know, saying about <laughs> them. <laughs> you know, them growing up and things like that. And then you think about like our our community, we're known for single motherhood, you know. And so when we when we do have these sons speaking in general, when we do have these sons, they're the the king of the house, you know, they have to take that well, they don't have to, but, you know, in in generations in the past they had to take that man the you know that man role of the house and they didn't have time to grow up you know um but it it makes me question like how do and i guess it plays against each other because i'm like how can men who come from you know single parent households not be nurturing you know you're raised by a woman and you you're not nurturing but then you have to think about it again they're expected to be that man figure in the house and so when you um when you when they take their role it's like man up you know you, you got your uncle he was like yeah man men don't cry you know all that <laughs> all that stuff it's just, right, like right, i'm right i'm debunking my, my husband now because because you know he had he's had a rough year. He's had deaths, and you know, and all he talks about is I got to be strong for my mama. I got to be strong for my brother. I got to be strong, and I'm like, oh, so are you going to be strong for you? Like, who's going to be strong for you? Like, I can be there, but right. are you going to be? You you have to be strong for yourself to be strong for somebody else. So, all right, you you need to make sure you're okay first. Like, you you can't be. I got to do this. I got to do that. Oh. Check yourself first, you know, check in with yourself emotionally before you try to be there for somebody else emotionally. And so I think it's just, you know, that I got to be a man and, you know, the idea of what the man is. And so it, it gets to, like, it gets hard to show emotion for them. And so it is something that they have to work on because they, these these boys, um, especially ones from single parent households, that's what they've been taught for years. And then once you, you know, it's, it's just like parenthood. Like if you're taught the same parenting style for years, well, that's what you see for generations. That's what you're going to do. And it's going to take a while to debunk. Mm -hmm. Same with men and emotions and, you know, what they learn is they have to take time to debunk it because that's what they've seen. That's what they've been taught. Be a man, no pride, work hard, provide for your family, you know, the standard. So it's, it's something that they, like Sean said, have to be willing to do. Um, it has to be a want because we can we can talk to to men all day and it, it's just gonna go. You know, they I hear you. <laughs> and then they're gonna go about their business. <laughs> but it ain't go, But they ain't doing nothing about it. Yeah, yeah they ain't doing nothing about it. So I have to tell her husband now about. Joshua, I want him to be, you know, I don't want him to be all emotional, 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 but I want him to show emotions. And I think that's one of the things because um, the boys, his, his, the younger, the boys that, that's older, Josh with the middle boys, I say middle, because he have a grown son now. And, but the ones in the middle, I have to tell him, you know, he was like, uh, they were like, Joshua crying too much, or, you know. Or we ain't never seen dad, and he be like, he don't need to cry. Boy, man, you know, you don't need to stop all that whining and stuff like that. And I told him, and they made a statement. They was like, we ain't never seen 
emotional hurt. And nowadays, kids need to see that because especially mm-hmm. boys, they need to see it's okay to be emotional because that's how a lot of these kids, these boys end up fighting, doing the things that they do because they, it, it's, it's gay or you're a punk if you sit back by some. No, cry, baby. I want Joshua to cry. Cry. If that is crying is going to get you to where you need to re-up and come back. Do what you need to do. That don't make you know than a man. That don't make you nothing. That just make you know that you are able to have emotions. How you going to show your child emotions? How you going to help? How he going to help his child? Then that same curse, that same tra- train thought. Boy, shut up. You, you, you too whiny. You're going to be a wimp or whatever. No, because if he don't, that's why so many, I feel like so many of them have anger issues. And like I say, fighting stuff because that's what they know. That's that's how they talk. No, you mad what they do now. They mad. They go take it out on somebody. They can't show any emotions. Okay. And I definitely agree. And so this has been great. I, I got a few nuggets. Um, a lot of nuggets actually. I hope y'all got some nuggets. Some of the ones that I got include, um, because I take notes. I was taking notes. So number one, develop a want. Uh, they were talking about how you literally have to have a want because this whole thing has been primarily about being a present parent, and you have to literally want. And who? I mean, I've never thought about it like that. You have to want to be a present parent, and you also have to heal that inner child because if you don't, you'll keep that saying all that weight that you've been carrying and you kind of project it onto your children and raise your children that way and you have to be who you wanted just because you don't have didn't have that person when you were growing up is literally not an excuse you still have to use what you were given even if you weren't given good use that mm-hmm. because if you were given bad that means okay i literally just yeah, did i learn from that. So, and, and and be observant be observant i forgot about that one you have to observe because how will you know your children? How will you know how to navigate through parenthood if you're not observant? So I am very grateful. Um, there is one thing that I, um, and we're about to close. I'm going to give them my thanks. But one of the things that I heard Toni Morrison say uh, years ago, and for some reason it always stuck with me. She was talking about how when her children came into the room, she used to look at them and try to find out, is there something wrong? Are your pants buttoned up? Is your shirt on right? Is your clothes, are your clothes crooked? And she says that she learned because her child told her that that makes them feel like, dang, insecure. they're just so critical. So she says that what she does is she greets her children, right, insecure. Um, she greets her children with a smile before she critiques, before she does anything else, she greets them with a smile. And I think that, that is such a good thing. I just wanted to give that to um, all of the listeners because I think that that is something that people should definitely um, start to implement. Because, again, like um, what Alicia said earlier, children don't really remember what you give them. They remember how you make them feel. And if they walk mm-hmm. into the room and you make them feel bad initially, they're going to be insecure and they're going to grow up thinking, well, my mom or my dad really don't like me that much. So that's just a little tidbit from somebody that don't have no children. I want to thank, <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank Chantel and Walisha for coming on. I don't know what episode this is because guess what? <laughs> this is recorded a long time ago. So <laughs> want to thank them for coming on. I'm so glad to have you guys here. Glad that we could have that conversation for another. And... Thanks so much, you guys. Thanks for having me back.